Hi, I'm Sam, and this is Sam Says. Today, I'm going to be doing my solo review of Liz Boa. Liz Boa is playable by one to four players and is published by Eagle Griffin Games and is designed by Vital Lacerda. So if you want to know my thoughts about Liz Boa as a whole for two to four players, go to my YouTube channel and check out my other review, as this review is solely for playing solo mode. Let's get into it. When you set up for solo mode, you're going to set up as if you're going to be playing with two players. So that is going to adjust set up a little bit. One of the main differences is you are going to be putting this over the lowest row, which is row E. Um, and you will take out uh, decree cards that cannot be played with two players um, or deal with row E. Um, in addition, you're going to put a non-player controlled color in the monarch spaces. Um, and just a few minor changes to the game, adjusting the amount of ships. Uh, but for the most part, the setup is going to be pretty similar. Uh, when you play solo mode, you are playing against Lacerda himself. And uh, let me tell you, he is an intimidating opponent. So when, when you play against Lacerda, he gets um, these guys. I can't remember what they're called, monarchs or whatever. Um, he has some building houses and he takes some decree cards, but he doesn't play with one of your player boards, so he does not get one of these. You still play with yours as normal, but he does not get one. Um, and he follows a very specific set of rules on his turn, and you have this handy dandy two sheet for following the solo rules. So what he does is at the beginning of the game, you're going to set up, you'll take, um, this guy is called his helper, and he'll go over one of the four stacks of cards here at the side of the board. Um, he is going to start with his courtier um, in one of the noble spots. And on his turn, what he does is his courtier moves, and there he is going to take the state action. And the state action is going to depend, he'll take either the top or the bottom one, depending on where his helper is. So if his helper is on one of the bottom two spaces, he'll take the bottom action. If his is on one of the top two spaces, he'll take the top action. Pretty simple, you just do what it says. Um, and it goes over exactly how he would perform that action in the solo rules. Then he will take the noble's action. So he'll actually go through and take the noble's action. And once again, follows pretty specific rules on how he does that. And you just refer here to the sheet. Um, then he will discard a card from the display. So as you know, at the end of your turn, you draw a card. And that's one of the triggers that will move you into the next phase or to the end of the game. Where his helper is, he'll discard a card from there. And then his helper moves. That's what he does. Uh, and so he follows a pretty specific set um, of what he will do. Um, also, at the change of period, he will score one wig, so one victory point for every piece of rubble that he has collected um, through building stores and building uh, public buildings. Um, and, and that's pretty much the chain. You will play your turn exactly like normal um, in a two-player game. You're just going to continue to move around and, and do all the stuff you would normally do. So let's get into it. How does it play? I will say as a disclaimer, generally with Euro games, most of the time when they introduce a solo mode, I'm not a big fan. When I play solo games myself, I like to be able to win. I want to be playing against the game and I want to know that I have achieved victory. Bettering yourself and improving your score is, is always a good thing to be able to do, And but for me personally, that's not what motivates me. I want to be able to win. I want to go in and, and beat the game. You do have the option to try and beat Lacerda in this game. I don't know that you can. <laughs> he, he starts scoring victory points upon victory points upon victory points upon victory points all over the place. He, I mean, most of it is going to come over here, and it kind of slows down a little bit near the end of the game, but, but he, he scores a ton of victory points. Um, and end of the game, he's going to score three wigs for each um, decree card that he gets throughout the game, which, depending on where your setup was, he generally accrues at, at a decent pace. Um, I have not gotten anywhere close to him. Um, I mean, they have little rules on, on the side of the solo sheet where it talks about your position in court, and, and it does uh, change scoring a little bit. You change scoring. Uh, but it tells you whether you're the jester or the court servant or the king's favorite or the marquis's right hand. 
I am definitely on the very lower end. Um, I, Lacerda is, is a is a rough player. But how did it feel playing the game? This is where I had an issue with it. Um, there, there's a ton going on in Lisboa normally. I mean, there's just there's so much stuff that happens on the board, and there's so many different options to take into account when you're thinking. So, in my mind, I would think that that'd be a lot better solo because I have the time to really look down and be like, okay, what do I want to do this? Do I want to do this? Do I want to do this? What I found was that at least it happened to me is I got a lot of AP analysis paralysis. And when I'm playing the solo game and I have AP, it was frustrating to me as a solo player. Um, and also trying to get used to how Lacerda takes his turns um, and understanding exactly what he's going to do took a lot of my time. Really looking at, okay, what he's, is he going to do? And I just kind of, I calculated his turn before as I was looking at what I wanted to do. Okay, is he going to stop what I want to do? By that time, I'd forgotten what I wanted to do. Then I had to look back, reevaluate my options, say, okay, is this going to be the best option? And I ended up just going back and forth, and that's very po probable that it's just a me problem. Um, but I'm the one doing the review, so that's what I get to say. I did not enjoy playing. I felt like there was a lot of bookkeeping. Um, there was so much of my time I felt was spent taking Lacerda's turn for him and scoring victory points for him. And then I'd go through and spend eight minutes thinking about what I'm going to do on my turn. When I actually took my turn, it was pretty quick. You know, I went through and just did my actions. Um, and then the bookkeeping of doing Lacerda's turn. And then when it came back to my turn, thinking about what Lacerda's going to do on his turn. And then, oh yeah, what am I going to do on my turn? Well, I don't know. Um, it, it is not my solo game. It's a difficult game, and being difficult is not is not a bad thing. Um, it's good to have a challenging solo game. That's why you want to play solo. Um, but I, I felt overwhelmed by it. Uh, there was just so much. Um, I'm still a huge fan of the player versus player, you know, two, three, four players. I'm a big fan of this game. Huge fan. I love it. It's going to stay in my collection for years. I'm going to enjoy pulling it out. When I pulled it out and I looked at it, I got so excited to play. Um, but the solo mode just was not for me. Um, so make your own decision, though. Uh, test it out. If you're a solo game player, try it. I, from It's possible that it's something that you will just absolutely love and and take on the challenge of you know, completing the achievements listed in, in the solo rules and beating Lacerda. It just wasn't my thing. Uh, but that's it. I just want to do a quick little video on the solo review of Lisboa. So once again, if you want to see my thoughts on the full game, check out my other review um, on my YouTube channel. I'm Sam. This was Sam Says. Uh, please subscribe to my channel. Check me out on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Thank you so much for watching, and have a great day.